Okay, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, what we're going to do is take a look at uh, one way uh, that you can uh, adjust a uh, dipole antenna um, using an antenna analyzer uh, to get your resonant frequency of the dipole right where you want it, uh, depending on uh, what your uh, intention is uh, for using the antenna. So um, there might be other ways to do it, but uh, this has worked pretty well for me, so I thought I'd share it with you. So we'll start uh, with the uh, uh, basic theory, a reminder, this should all be review for everybody because the first time we saw this was back in the uh, technician study groups and it's a, a schematic of a dipole antenna. And a dipole is nothing more than two wires connected to a feed line uh, where the feed line goes back and connects to a transceiver um, of some sort. And the uh, overall length of the dipole uh, with both elements is half the wavelength of the frequency that we're trying to operate at. And then the length of each element is a quarter wavelength or half of the overall length of the antenna. Since there's two elements, uh, uh, the overall length divided between the, the two elements. So the other thing we saw in the uh, technician study groups was this formula where if we wanted to target a particular frequency, uh, let's call it uh, F target, uh, we could determine the length of the uh, dipole, the overall wavelength, by dividing 468 by the frequency in megahertz. And what that will give us will be the overall length of the dipole. So that's our, our best uh, first approximate guess at uh, what the overall length would be. And then since there's two elements, it only makes sense that each individual element would make up half of the overall length. So we take the overall length, divide that by two, and that tells us what the length of each element's going to need to be. Now, let's say in this particular case, what we're wanting to do is to put up a 10-meter uh, dipole antenna uh, so that uh, a new ham that happens to have a, a single sideband transceiver could operate a phone uh, single sideband on the 10-meter uh, band. And if you take a look at the uh, frequency privilege for technician on 10 meters, they can operate from 28.3 megahertz to 28.5 megahertz in either CW or phone. So we're going to pick right in the middle as our targeted uh, frequency where we'd like to have the resonant frequency of this antenna centered, and it'll be 28.4 uh, megahertz. So going back to this equation, uh, we can determine the, the overall length of the uh, dipole to be 16, almost about 16 and a half feet uh, by taking 468 and divided 28.4 into it. And then we can take that 16 and a half, divide that by two, and that tells us that each element needs to be about uh, 8.24 feet long, which would be eight feet, two and three quarter inches or thereabouts. Um, so just from determining this target resonant frequency, we're able to determine the lengths of the elements and the overall length of the antenna. <clears throat> so we make that adjustment. Uh, we uh, either trim or uh, fold back the antenna elements or adjust the length in uh, whatever fashion uh, makes the most sense. And then we want to be able to measure and record the SWR uh, at the resonant frequency and determine the resonant frequency of the antenna uh, from the actual antenna. And so what we're going to need are two things. We're going to need two bits of information. We're going to need the target frequency, which we've already determined. That's where we'd like for it to be. In our case, it's 28.4 megahertz. And then we also have to determine what the resonant frequency of the actual antenna is. And uh, that's what we're going to uh, uh, show you how to do here uh, in a few minutes. 
Uh, although it's not absolutely necessary, you probably want to also record the measured uh, SWR at the resonant frequency when you uh, find what that resonant frequency is, so you have a, a feel for how uh, good the antenna is going to be. And this is all math, uh, and after I thought about it, uh, and I put this stuff in here, I think I'm just going to skip it. If anybody wants to go over it, let me know, um, and I'd be happy to get into it. Uh, but basically what we're going to end up with is a, a form that you use that you can use to come up with all the numbers you need. And here's that form. Um, so what you could do, you could print this off. Say you're, you're going to adjust the antenna and you've got an antenna analyzer and you just fill in the blanks. Your target re resonant frequency, for example, in this case is 28.4 megahertz. Uh, you go through your calculation of dividing 468 by that uh, uh, 28.4 to get the overall length of the antenna. And then you divide that number by two and that will give you the length of each element. And we'll call that the, the first approximation of the length. So that's our, our current best guess of uh, what the, uh, the element lengths are going to be. So we take the antenna and we adjust it to those lengths, put it in the air, and use the antenna analyzer to find the uh, resonant frequency uh, of the antenna as it's hanging there in the air. And that's what will go in this space here. So you've got your target frequency, your resonant frequency, and you can record your standing wave ratio at the resonant frequency right here. So it's just fill in the blanks. And then once you get that, get these uh, three pieces of information, you've got everything you need to know to figure out what the new length of the antenna needs to be or the new length of the element. So you take your first approximation length that's up here, stick it here, put your target frequency in, which you knew by looking at the band plan, that's the 28.4, and then what the resonant frequency is that you measured off the antenna. Um, then once you've got those in the blanks, you just take the target frequency and divide it by the measured resonant frequency and multiply that times your uh, uh, initial uh, approximation of the length of the element and that'll tell you what the new length needs to be um, so in, in feet so then the adjustment that you need to make is to take your first approximate length in our case uh, it was um, I forget what it was but that that's the number we calculated <coughs> then you subtract from that length the new length that you just calculated here and both of those are in feet so we got to multiply it times 12 to give us the total adjustment that we have to do on each element to get the resonant frequency of the antenna closer to the target frequency and if this result is positive that means that you're going to lengthen the elements make them longer uh, because that will lower the resonant frequency and if this is a negative number, then you shorten the elements, which will raise the resonant frequency to get it closer to the target frequency. So the way you go about gathering the information to do that, I'm going to cover in a, a video um, that will uh, play right after this. And it will explain how you can take an antenna analyzer to get the data you need. So we'll go ahead and stop and hopefully I can get everything restarted again. Okay, um, I'm on my uh, lower uh, back deck now and I kind of use this as my laboratory uh, because this is where I, it's pretty easy for me to access my antennas and I can set radios and stuff and run tests and that kind of stuff here. So um, this is my fun spot. Um, what I'm going to do is go over how I used my antenna analyzer uh, to get the SWR readings necessary to uh, adjust the dipole. Uh, so I'm going to be using my Rig Expert AA54. Um, it's got a display here. I'll turn it on so you can see it. 
and it's got a powers up with a main menu um, that explains the uh, uh, functions of each of the buttons on the front and there's the buttons you can uh, uh, control everything you need uh, from this front panel uh, the antenna is connected to um, the connector on the top of the unit and then on the bottom is a USB port that you can use to connect uh, the analyzer up to your computer if you want to do some analysis but essentially all we're going to be doing is um, just using the analyzer and um, uh, to get the data that we need um, to tune your antenna so um, like most things if you put a little planning into it ahead of time uh, the actual testing goes pretty quickly so this is just a uh, kind of the plan I put together for what we're going to do. What we're interested in is the general phone band uh, for 40 meters and that runs from 7.175 to 7.3 megahertz and uh, ideally what we'd like to do is target the reson resonant frequency of this antenna at 7.238 megahertz which is the dead nut center of the range. Um, now to take our readings, um, we've got uh, started at 7.175, the low end, and then I incremented in uh, 25 kilohertz increments uh, for the frequencies we're going to measure. So we go 7.175, 7.2, all the way up to 7.3 megahertz, and then uh, also want to take a reading at the target or the midpoint of 7.238 to see where. Uh, the, res the resonant frequency is in relation to the target. So first thing I'll do, although it's not necessary, uh, just show you the capability of the instrument, is I'm going to do a sweep of the 40 meter range uh, or SWR and we can kind of get an idea of uh, what we're looking at. So we'll put this up here and to set the uh, sweep uh, up, I need to give it two bits of information. Uh, one is the uh, target frequency that to put it in the, that'll put in the uh, it'll be in the uh, center of the display, and then the range, um, how wide you want the display to be. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the frequency at 0 0.7238, which is our center. I'll just go ahead and re-enter it to three eight and then the range I want to go to I want to be zero six hundred kilohertz and what that'll do is it'll give us 300 kilohertz on each side of the target so that'll be outside of the range of the 40 meter uh, general phone band but uh, we might uh, want to see what's out there anyway so I just usually have the uh, the range a little wider uh, than the actual ham band that I'm studying so now the next thing I do is I go to the SWR plot screen and I'll hit the go button let's get this up here so you can watch it and here it goes so it's plotting the SWR through that range and the center being the target, you can see that the resonant frequency, the minimum on that SWR curve, is a little bit below the target. So there may or may not need to be any adjustment uh, for the antenna, but that's why we're going to take the hard numbers uh, to find out. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go back to frequency, and we're going to start at our first frequency, which is uh, 7175. So I'm going to enter 07175 and then hit the SDR. That's the number 7 button here. Uh, when you're using this, uh, when you're tuning your antenna a little later here, the 7 is for the SWR. It's a single reading. And this SWR, uh, the 4 button, is the plot. I hit the 4 button to get that last uh, graph that we looked at. So now I'm going to hit the 7 button, and then what it'll show me when I hit the go button is the 
SWR at 7.175 megahertz. So I'm going to call that 1.22 and I'll note that on the little piece of paper we just looked at. Now I'm going to go to the next frequency which would be 07200 hit the SWR button There we're looking at uh, 1.15. Next one is the frequency 07225. And at 07225, we're at 1.13. And the next one's going to be frequency. 07250 and for that at 7250 we're at 1.17 and then the next one it will be hit the frequency button 07275 Hit the SWR button and the little check mark for go. And at 7.275, we're at, uh, yeah, let's call that 1.27. Yeah, 1.26, okay. And then we'll go to the next one. Hit the frequency button again. I'm hitting that one right there. And we go to 07300. Oops. There we go, 07300. Hit the SWR button again. The plus, or the check mark, and we're at, uh, we'll call that 1.37. And the last one we want to take is the target, the one in the center. So hit the frequency button again, and we go to 07238. And hit the SWR button. And we're at 1.16. Yeah, maybe 1.15 after it settles down. Okay, so let's take a look at the data we just collected. And you can see it went pretty quickly because we uh, had everything laid out. So we started here at the low end, 7.175. The SWR is coming down and then it starts coming back up, so the resonant frequency is in there somewhere. And the resonant frequency we had um, at the target, 7.238, is 1.15. So it pretty much shows us what we saw um, on the, um, the sweep display, the graph of the SWR that the resonant frequency that the antenna is at right now is, is a little bit below the target. And uh, we'll go back in um, and take a look at, uh, take this data and see how we can use it to figure out how we need to adjust this antenna uh, to bring the resonant frequency closer to the target. So, I think I'll sign off now. Okay, I hope everybody made it back uh, to this point. And... Uh, there was one uh, thing I wanted to uh, expand on a little bit uh, from that video. Uh, in that video, uh, what we did is we took a, a range of frequencies here and measured the uh, standing wave ratio. And you could see that the minimum value or the resonant frequency is going to be somewhere in this range here. Uh, but that's a 50 kilohertz spread. So if we want to zoom in on it a little more, then you can use the same approach we did here, but break down the incremental steps and in frequencies into smaller uh, steps and record the standing wave ratios at just the same way that we did here. And then it'll show you uh, with a little more resolution where the actual resonant frequency is. Uh, so just wanted to mention that. It's just a, a repeat of the same type of thing you did here. You just do it with a different set of uh, frequency values. 
And now we're coming back to the worksheet that we discussed a little earlier. I uh, thought I'd show you how you'd fill that out uh, to come up with uh, the changes you need to make to the elements. So we just start up here at the top. Uh, we enter the uh, target resonant frequency, the 28.4 megahertz that we're trying to hit. Then we use this formula um, where we take the 468 divided by the 28.4 uh, megahertz, and that tells us the overall length of the antenna should be about 16 and a half feet. Uh, then we divide that by two to give us the length of each element, and then um, write that down in terms of uh, feet and inches because that's the way most uh, tape measures work. Uh, so then um, we adjust the elements uh, to this uh, value of length from the calculations. And then we go out with the antenna and we measure and record the standing wave ratio at the resonant frequency. And then this is just a point to capture all that information in one place to make it easy. So we take the target frequency, which we had up here, but we'll just put it here so we know where it's at. Uh, the resonant frequency that we determined uh, uh, from the measurements that we made and the standing wave ratio from uh, the resonant measurements. Then we come down here and we put in uh, the values uh, that we have up here, the first approximate length of the antenna element, and then our target frequency and our resonant frequency and we divide uh, the 28.4 divided by 27.8 and multiply that times 8.24 and that tells us what the new length of the antenna uh, element needs to be and then as far as the actual adjustment that uh, needs to be made uh, we take the first approximation subtract that value from it the uh, the new length so that's going to be the difference in the length between the elements uh, to make our adjustment and then since these units are feet 8.24 feet minus 8.42 feet we have to multiply that to times 12 to give us inches and this is telling us then that the adjustment needs to be a negative 2.1 inches and um, the thing to keep in mind is that if this value is positive it means you need to lengthen the elements and that will lower the resonant frequency uh, which means your uh, actual resonant frequency is above your targeted frequency. And if it's a minus number, that means you need to shorten the elements. And that will raise the resonant frequency of the antenna closer to the uh, targeted frequency. And if uh, you're lazy like I am, uh, I put together uh, a little spreadsheet. Uh, I kind of like doing this because it just makes it uh, uh, simpler and fewer errors uh, are possible. And it's the same information. And uh, if you've ever used one of my spreadsheets, uh, you know that a blue number is a variable. Uh, so you enter this scaling number. That's the number from the formula. Uh, you enter your target uh, resonant frequency. All these things are calculated for you. And then from the measurements that you took, you enter in the resonant frequency and uh, the measured SWR at the resonant frequency. And then from that, it calculates the adjustments that you need. Um, so you need to shorten the new length is 8.42 feet. So it means you need to shorten the uh, element uh, 2.1 inches for about two inches. And really, from a practical standpoint, you're not going to get 2.1. Uh, you know, two would be a good target to uh, uh, go after. And um, I didn't, I put the decision on the plus and minus, whether you lengthen or shorten it in the spreadsheet so you don't have to remember anything. Uh, the spreadsheet figures out if it needs to be uh, shortened or lengthened. So this spreadsheet I put in. Um, this meetings of file on the OneDrive. Uh, if you're interested uh, or if you forget where it's at, let me know and I can email you a copy. Uh, but you could do this um, um, 
just as easily as the handwritten page uh, we just looked at. Now the uh, uh, yellow sheet of paper that we looked at in the video and uh, what we were looking at there was the 40 meter dipole that I have in uh, uh, at my uh, shack um, and this is how I filled the spreadsheet out uh, so I've got my scaling number there uh, that's changeable if you want to but that's kind of the standard number that the formula calls for uh, what the target resonant frequency is and that's on this 40 meter dipole what we're looking for is a midpoint in the general single sideband phone section because uh, Judy does uh, all her uh, POTA and park um, uh, QSO parties and things like that on the general uh, phone section. So we want that antenna centered there. It calculated the lengths uh, that uh, the antenna elements should be. Then from the measurements, I determined that the resonant frequency was 7.195 megahertz. And I've got a target of uh, 1.23. And the resonant uh, uh, SWR was at 1.13, which is very good uh, SWR. So the new length uh, is calculated at 32 and a half feet, and it's telling me I should shorten each element two inches. And this is where the judgment comes in. Um, I decided not to make that adjustment uh, because we were very close to where we needed to be and I'll show you uh, uh, with the graph uh, here in the next slide I think it is that um, we really wouldn't be gaining much by making that adjustment the other thing to consider is that every time you uh, take down and put that uh, antenna up you run the risk of something changing something breaking uh, something not being the way it was physically when um, you took the measurements so at this point, I didn't feel it was worth the risk to make that adjustment because I was still getting, uh, uh, was expecting very good performance uh, from the antenna. And uh, over the couple of years we've been operating it, it has performed extremely well. And we get nothing but very good uh, signal reports, or Judy does, um, from uh, people that she contacts. Okay, what this uh, plot does is kind of uh, shows everything that is going on with that 40 meter antenna that we looked at. Uh, you can see right here the uh, uh, this line right here, the lower band limit at 7.175 megahertz um, is right here, and then the upper band is right here. So this is the band that the antenna is going to operate. And you can see at the lower limit, uh, we've got um, 7.15 SWR at the resonant frequency here at 7.195 megahertz. We've got uh, an SWR of 1.13. And at our target, we have an SWR of 1.23 right here. And then at the upper band, we have an SWR of 1.49. So even if I would have moved this resonant frequency closer, I really don't think we would be getting uh, any noticeable improvement in performance because it is uh, extremely uh, uh, fine SWR uh, in this whole band. And uh, so that was the uh, the reasoning why I didn't make that last adjustment. So, you know, that's kind of a, a personal call, uh, just depending on uh, what you're after. And finally, uh, just as a point of reference, I just wanted to show you the analyzer worksheet that I've uh, put together that I use when I uh, use my antenna analyzer. Uh, the thing I ran into before I did this was that it, it's hard keeping all these uh, frequencies and the, the ranges and all that straight. Uh, particularly if, if you're doing a, a multi-band antenna, it's particularly uh, uh, confusing. 
So what this is, is it's just a table. Okay. It's, it's just a table where I've got all the hand bands. So I've got 160 through 6 here. And um, I noted the uh, frequency ranges. Uh, for example, 160 meters runs from 1.8 to 2 megahertz. Uh, the band range or the width of the band, I put that in there. Uh, you can see some bands are pretty narrow, some are pretty wide. Uh, that's also uh, uh, comes into play when you're making that decision if you want to make that next movement uh, adjustment or not. Um, and then the two numbers that I need to get a sweep, um, like we saw in the uh, analyzer uh, demo, is I need the center frequency and then how wide the uh, sweep I want. So I just work those up for each band so that all I have to do is come in and I enter the center frequency and the sweep range and then I get my data. And then I come to this uh, band and I enter the center frequency and the sweep range. I don't even have to think about it, which is uh, the way I work the best. Got a place here I can put down the measured resonant frequency and then just as a reminder, uh, the uh, midpoint on the general uh, single sideband, um, what the midpoint of that range would be uh, as a point of reference. And then also for the CW uh, uh, and digital uh, section of the band, what the midpoint would be there. In case I wanted to um, tune an antenna for CW or digital. And then down here, for example, I've got a range if I want to do like on the infed uh, half wave, uh, if I want to uh, sweep the full range of the antenna from 80 to 6 meters, these are the settings I would use to get that sweep. So it's just kind of a, a handy tool. You're more than welcome to something like this. Your analyzer, if you get one, may be a little different. Uh, you might want to make up a different table or adapt this one or whatever, but uh, I've just found this a, a good way um, to keep from getting into uh, a mess and uh, making mistakes on the setup. So I think that's about all I know. So if you have any questions, let me know.